Okay, so uh, before I get completely into the Marine Kingdom, I'll go over uh, just like I did uh, in the the other two previous videos on the Domains of Darkness. Uh, again, it's a warning, right? Do not engage with principalities, powers, and rulers that are in any of these kingdom kingdoms unless you are directly authorized by God to do so. Okay. Now, every single believer in the kingdom has the right and has the authority and has the power through Jesus Christ to go and war in any of these domains in dark of, of darkness on your behalf, on behalf of your children, on behalf of your parents, right, on behalf of your bloodline. You have the authority to go and do that, right? I put this as a disclaimer because a lot of people um, have been taught, like I mentioned before, um, a lot of people have been sold books, you know, e-courses, all this other stuff that has told people that they could just go and do whatever they want in these kingdoms in the spirit realm, and you can't, okay? So before you go trying to pray over other people's lives and that sort of thing, your neighbors or you know, other people in the church and that sort of thing, uh, you need to make sure that God has authorized you to, to really be able to do that on other people's behalf. Because what we actually do, we, we've been told to just go and just pray for everybody constantly all the time. When the reality of it is a lot of people pray witchcraft prayers in general, a lot of people in the church pray witchcraft prayers in general because they don't even understand what it is that they're praying for, right? We, we see somebody going through something or somebody tells us what's going on in their life, and then we just assume, okay, we just go and start praying for all this stuff. But have you really asked God what's even taking place there? Have you really sought God for that person on what's really going on in their life? If you don't have the gift of discerning of spirits, right? If God doesn't give you revelation on the spot to pray for other people and that sort of thing, you won't know necessarily in the moment what's going on. And so a lot of times what happens is you've got a lot of people that are pr praying these witchcraft prayers. And what do I mean by witchcraft prayers, right? Because... If people are in the kingdom, right, then they're not really witches and warlocks is what people say, okay? What makes people witches and warlocks in the kingdom of God, right, is because people just go and start doing whatever they think that they want to in the spirit realm, okay? And it's not authorized by God. If it's not authorized by God for someone to be doing it, then you're performing witchcraft. It's it's no different than soothsaying, fortune telling, divination, right? Heavy divination comes out of the marine kingdom. And when you see like revelation happen in the body of Christ, and but you see all these other things kind of go on with certain people, then uh, most of the times, more times than not, that divination is coming out of the marine kingdom, okay? Especially if you see like prophets and certain people giving over to like vanities, right? You see them with jewelries and you always have to see them with um, uh, flashy clothes and suits, right? And, and all of the name brand stuff, having to wear Gucci, Louis, and uh, Chanel, Dior, all these other stuff, right? So, and I'll get into some of that, like, towards the end, as far as, just, like, products and how things like that are, are made, and they come from uh, the Marine Kingdom, okay? But these, the, the witchcraft prayers and these things come about because you're, and I don't want to say you as, as, as if I'm speaking revelation about any of you specifically, okay? But I'm just talking about the body in Christ in general. If we go and you're pray, trying to pray somebody out of something specific, something specific, more times than not, these people have done something to, they, they've sown something to reap back whatever it is that they're getting. Most of these people in the body of Christ, they're not even repentant for any of the things that they've done. And that's what happens when you offer the uh, a crown without the cross, right? And you offer just this lovey-dovey hippie Jesus to people without any type of repentance, without any type of crucifixion, without any type of dying to yourself and dying to the things of this world. And you're just told that you could have the, that Walmart Jesus for $2, you know what I mean? That doesn't cost you anything, okay? And that's just not biblical, right? So that's what happens over a period of time when all of these people come to Christ based off of this, this, this lovey-dovey Jesus that's handed out to them. And, and when this happens, people are not repentant. People are not repentant. They repeat a, a sinner's prayer. Maybe they get baptized, whatever the case may be, but it doesn't make them born again. By the Spirit of the Lord, okay? They ha you have to be born again. Your spirit man has to be turned from darkness to light, okay? And that doesn't happen just because you repeat a sinner's prayer. It doesn't happen. You could ask Jesus to come in your heart 50 times, but when he looks upon your heart, he knows that it's, it's deceptive, right? He knows that it's not truly for him. So 
Like I mentioned before, why is it that we tell everyone that grace is a free gift that's given, but somehow we get to tell God what to do in our life. We get to come to him as a sinner and say, come into my heart. We get to come into him as a sinner and we get and, and, and we do an act or a deed of being baptized and all of a sudden we're born again. We, we don't move. We don't get to move the hand of God like that, especially as sinners. Now, when you walk with God, sure, God's hand will move on your behalf. We see people in the Bible have ne that have negotiated with God successfully and unsuccessfully with God. So God's hand does move for many things. But when we're just out living in the world and, and you just have an emotional experience at church, Right. And people come forth and they claim to give their life to Christ. But God looks upon the heart. He sees that that's not really true. Some of you even know what I'm talking about, because at one point in time, you thought you was born again until you really got born again. And you realize, like, wow, I thought I was born again the whole time, but I wasn't. You know, I had the same kind of experience, you know, happen. And it's and it's through this false watered down gospel and even through the false prophetic stuff that happens. So my point is, is that you get a lot of these people trying to pray people out of things that they've sown themselves into. You could pray for 20 years and nothing in that person's life is ever going to change because for 20 years there was something that God needed them to repent for and they still haven't repented for it. Okay, There's something they still need to, to let go of and give forgiveness for that they've still never done that. Okay, But then you got these people praying all the time for this change and this different stuff to happen into their life, but it's not lining up with God. It don't line up with God because it's not passing through the courts of heaven and God's saying, okay, I'm going to relent off of this person's life, right? I'm going to make sure that the enemy doesn't have a place in this person's life anymore, okay? People want the blessings of God with, people want the, uh, the blessings of God without uh, going through his correction, without going through repentance, without being obedient, without living holy, okay? So that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying just going around praying for everybody without even knowing what's going on in that person's life, okay? So... We, the enemy has deceived the body of Christ for so long, okay, that, that this is kind of what it's came to, right? That everybody can just go around praying for everybody. Like when people ask me to pray for them and I say, yeah, I'll go before God. And I, and I do, I go before God. I mention, you know, some of your guys' names or other people's names. And I ask the Lord, Lord, if it's your will, reveal to me what's taking place here. Reveal to me what's going on. Reveal to me what it is you want me to do. And if he doesn't give me any type of response, then I just go on, okay? And maybe tomorrow he might bring your name up when I'm in prayer or maybe when I'm doing something random or a week from now, a person's name or their face or your a person's picture or somebody I know might get brought to my mind. And I'll know that the Lord, it, now it's time, the Lord wants to reveal something to me. And and that's the way that I kind of go through uh, just just my walk in, in, the, in, the, in the prophetic in general because I, I'm not allowed to just go into the realm of the spirit and try to see into people's lives and see what's going on. That's divination. That's what these, all these other people are trying to do. And that's how right away the enemy knows that they're, that God is not authorizing them to do that at that point in time. And that's how these people end up being witches and warlocks. They may have started out well, but now they're witches and warlocks operating in the prophetic. Now they picked up other spirits in the, in the spirit realm. So now when they go to pray for something, there's, there's another spirit there that's giving them revelation. Sometimes it's false revelation. Sometimes it's partial revelation, whatever the case may be, okay? But when you go in the spirit realm and you start trying to do all kinds of stuff, you're going to end up messing with the enemy. You're going to end up retaliated against in your family, you know, work, your kids, whatever it might be. And if that doesn't happen, the enemy might relent on doing any of those things and might see you as someone who know, who they know is going to have potential in the future. And, and you might, that spirit of divination or whatever might stick with you for the next however long. And then once you get on a public platform, you're operating in a spirit of divination this whole entire time. You build up a platform online, you do all this stuff, and you've been operating in other spirits, false spirits, this whole entire time. And then what you do is you start imparting those false spirits into all these people that you're praying over. Okay. And then next thing you know, you don't just have one false prophet that that is that is operating in divination from the Marine Kingdom. Now they've imparted that spirit into a hundred people. Now those hundred people imparted into a hundred people. Now you got a thousand. Now you got ten thousand working. Next thing you know, you're gonna have you got a hundred thousand until unless until these things get destroyed at the foundation and these false ministries get brought down. Okay, you're gonna have keep having that spirit being imparted and then all of these people are going to keep going thinking they're given revelation from God and it's not coming from God. Okay. Even if it's accurate. And I'm gonna go I'm going to get to the point where I talk about um, Moses and Pharaoh because it has to do with the waters, okay? So when I talk about the marine kingdom, I'm not just talking about the ocean. I'm talking about the kingdoms. These kingdoms reside in all large bodies of water, all the five lakes that are up north, all the oceans all over the uh, world, okay, and, and streams and rivers. So, And when I get to this, you will see how 
even in Pharaoh's time, these people got power from the gods that were in the Nile. Okay, in the, in the Nile River, the ones that they worship. They received that power of divination. That's why when they threw the rods down, they both turned into snakes. Okay, so they, the, the enemy has power to manipulate and to make things, things seem like it's godly when it's not. And if you don't think that all of this deliverance ministry that has just started out, right, has just started becoming a fad. I'm not saying deliverance just now started happening, right? It's been happening since biblical times, but I'm saying it started to now become this fad and it's starting to have this growth. If you don't think for one second that the enemy's coming out ahead of that, then you're already deceived because the enemy's going to raise up a bunch of stuff, right, in deception before God brings the true things along. All right. A lot of these people ask yourself that these people that are doing these big ministries, these big core groups and all this different stuff. Ask yourself, ask yourself for just a moment, who did deliverance on them? Who did they go to for deliverance? Who did they sit before that went that walked them through deliverance? To, who literally seen these spirits be cast out of them that did the work with these people? Because you're not going to find the names. You're not going to find anybody who says who says anything. There's no evidence or proof of any of this stuff ever happening. Okay? And I and I say that for all of them. For all of them. There's only a couple people that have um, public ministries on like a larger type platform that are that are truly anointed and doing deliverance ministry that are out publicly right now. Now I'm not saying that you guys might not have somebody in your state somewhere that has a few hundred or however many people that goes to their church that are truly anointed to do ministry. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about those who you know they might have Facebook, they might have social media pages and YouTube's too. But I'm just talking about those who have those who are on a larger scale publicly. Okay? And those those few people, they never sought platforms. They just did the work of the Lord. They go into the secret place for two months and don't come out. They've been, I, I know that for a fact for, with these people, and I've been to their ministries in different states. I've been around them, so I know the power and the anointing that is literally there. Okay. And they don't and, and they don't do they don't join together in unity with other people who claim to do deliverance ministry or none of that stuff. All of those people have contacted these people because these people operate with true authority and true power. All of these people have tried to connect with them to make themselves look better. But these people have publicly professed their, that their anointing is not for sale and they will not do uh, ministry with any of these people. Why? Because they know that the heart of these people is really about the attention. It's really about the money that it brings in. It's really about the fame and all these things. The world has never been taken out of these people. Okay? They just use in Jesus' name to 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 make moves and make their ministries look certain ways. So anyhow, what are the uh what are the domains of darkness? I'm gonna give a quick rundown again, like I did at the beginning of the other videos, right? For anybody who uh you know, didn't see those videos, right? So the in the domains of darkness, the five domains of darkness, there's two that reside in the heavenlies, and then there's the three that reside in the earthly domain, okay? The domain of Lucifer is in the heavenlies, okay? The domain of the devil is in the earth, and those are two, two, two different people. I know that a lot of people uh, in the Bible, they classify them as the same person, but one was actually a cherub and the other one was a seraph. They're not even the same type, okay? So... Uh, the heavenly domains is the cosmic domain and the pandemonium domain. The cosmic domain resides in the second heaven. The pandemonium domain resides also in the second heaven and is also in the cosmic domain, but it is where the throne of Lucifer is actually at. A lot of people think that Lucifer is down in the earth, but when they were cast out, when they were banished um, out of the heavens, some of them still fell into the second heavens and reside in the second heavens. Others fell into the water. This is where we get the marine kingdom. Others fell into the land the earth, right? This is where we get the Pestifer kingdom that I talked about last weekend, okay? Some of them went under the earth, which is where the origins of the underworld's at, okay? With, that uh, has to do with death. This is where the Cro-Magnon kingdom comes from that I talked about last weekend, okay? In within all of these kingdoms, okay? You have to think about this. When God created the angels and he gave them all assignment, they were all, they were all uh, on his behalf, right? And so there's angels of architecture, angels of laws that, that were set over the judicial systems, right? I mentioned before that all of these uh, domains of darkness have their own court systems set up. So if there's people that are tied with covenants and contracts and oaths and agreements into these kingdoms, um, 
those uh, they have their own court system, right? All of that stuff is, is documented. Okay, so just because they they come and they bring chaos into people's lives doesn't mean that their systems and everything that's set up uh, doesn't have any type of order to it. Okay, they wouldn't be able to operate without the or without order, right? Lucifer uh, ha has these kingdoms set up, you know, very well. And at the end of every everyone's life, there's going to be uh, many quote unquote gods that are going to be able to come forth and, and claim all of these different rights to people, right? We know that it's a battle for souls on this earth. So at the end of a person's life or when uh, Christ comes back, we know that there's going to, there's going to be an entire court proceeding that's going to happen over your life. Okay. So there's also the angels of war, which were in uh, military and warfare, right? Angels who were in charge of knowledge in heaven, who were set over the intellectual systems, the teachings, we see this even back with the fallen angels in uh, Noah's time. They taught them all kinds of things. They taught them how to even brew alcohol and all of that sort of thing. Okay, um, Angels who are messengers, they were set over information technology. Um, uh, each angel has a ranking in a category of angels and demons that work under them. Okay, So all of these high-ranking angels are principalities. They have other principalities that work underneath them too. Then it goes all the way down into uh, demonic spirits. Okay. And then even like elemental spirits that I taught about last weekend, right, that pertain to like the earth, pertain to like the trees, the rocks, all this kind of stuff, right? There's elemental spirits that pertain to them. When it talks about the rocks cry out, we know that a physical rock doesn't cry out, but there's elemental spirits that are tied to all of these things. If you didn't catch that, go back and watch, uh, you know, last week's video on the Cro-Magnon Kingdom, which is the underworld, which is also tied to the cemetery, right, death, when death happens. And then um, the uh, Pestifer kingdom, which is the uh, kingdom of the earth, right? The land, like the desert, the forest, the mountains, all of that. Okay. So um, it might be a little difficult for many people to accept the truth of the domains of darkness, the different domains that I've been teaching about, okay, but the, the I know that the Lord is faithful. It's brought a lot of revelation to a lot of people from what I've heard over the past, like, three weeks. So, and this happens because there's a lot of people in the body of Christ who think that they're born again by the Spirit of the Lord. And I'm not saying none of you guys are. I'm just speaking in general. That, um, that truly aren't born again by a Spirit. So, you know, you see a lot of people, and I'm sure you see them on your you know, just in life in general, out in the public, and then you also see them on social media that um, they just, they don't, they don't have a spiritual mind. Their mind can't comprehend spiritual things. Um, it's stuck on understanding the Word of God just from a natural standpoint, the way that their natural mind can, can come up with whatever reasonings of the Bible, right? And it's kind of like how theology works a lot of times. So, and I'm not saying there's not anything wrong with theology and understanding uh you know, reading the word of God and have an understanding, but a lot of these people go in this theology and they still don't have the this, this spirit of the Lord teaching them. It still comes forth by a natural intellect of the word, word of God. And they try to figure out, okay, well, how did this happen? How did this happen? How did this happen? And they come up with the, the, what, what their natural mind can understand. And if the, the veil hasn't been removed for that person's mind to operate from a, a spiritual standpoint, it becomes very hard for them to understand uh, spiritual things. Okay. So in 1 Corinthians 2.14, a carnal person does not accept the teaching of God's spirit. Okay. He thinks they are nonsense. He can't understand them because a person must be spiritual to discern, to discern them. Okay. You can be taught. So a, a lot of what's happened even in the prophetic ministry in this day and age, especially, I can't really speak right uh, before the time period of when, you know, I arrived here. But what I've seen over the years, what the Lord has shown me is that a lot of these people have went and gained um, uh, intellectual knowledge about spiritual things, but they are not actually spiritually in intelligent. Okay, so you can go and you can read all kinds of books on witches and you can, you know, learn all this stuff about witchcraft from from a natural mindset. But you still have to be, one, born again. You still have to be, two, called by God. Like, these people are writing books on all this stuff, but where are they at? Were and against it in their regions, right? In their areas, like, over people. Where are they really at? Warring against this stuff and destroying, and, and destroying these works. They're more concerned about the knowledge of it to write a book in order to make profit 
right? They're more concerned about writing the books to put themselves out there as some high level teacher about something, but they don't really operate in any of it. Okay. They don't really operate in any of it. And, and if, and for those of you who are in deliverance, who have been through deliverance, you know that these things are multi-layered, even in the spirit realm. It's not like you just war against witchcraft, right? And, and then it's, it's said and, and done. Okay. So what is the, what is the Marine kingdom? Uh, this kingdom is also known as the, you know, you know that they talk about the Kabbalah, right? So it's a Kabbalistic, Kabbalistic kingdom. It's also known as the Kabbalistic kingdom. The Marine kingdom, which is spiritual, okay, in the spirit realm. Okay, maybe before I, maybe before I start this, I should just give a brief uh, rundown again about the three-part makeup of the human existence. Okay, so every single person has a spirit man, right? A spirit body, a soul body, and then the human body. Okay, everybody before you were born into this natural body that you find yourself in, right? You were already created as a spirit being, as a spirit body in the spirit realm, in the heavenlies. So I talked about this uh, last Saturday, and I won't go too deep into it, um, but I I did see one of those people that I mentioned to you about that does public minute, public deliverance ministry that is truly anointed, tons of videos on YouTube and that sort of thing. Um, I did, the Lord had me go on one of his lives on like, I think Monday or something like that. And um, I, I knew that he had seen my videos. He started talking about black magic, started talking about white magic. Then he said that we were all uh, spirit bodies with the Lord before we were put into our natural body here. Okay, and, and maybe I'll post uh, a part of his video, but I hadn't seen any of his stuff for like over a year. Like I haven't been on it or, you know, anything. The Lord's had me really busy. So, um, but it was, uh, it was just like a confirmation to know that the Lord has had me, you know, teaching the things that I'm supposed to be teaching and that sort of thing. And that um, he was also able to use that to teach on his life because it was only by the Lord. Literally, I seen the thing and his life started in 10 minutes and the Lord said, get on there. And I, and I got on there. And so all of this, so all the stuff that I've been teaching over the past two weeks is the same. He repeated all of that, all of that stuff. So, but what's wild is that a week before that, the Lord had given me a prophetic dream about him and him and I was doing ministry together. So, um, you know, who knows, but my point to that is, is that, so we have a spirit body that that's your spirit man is in the spirit realm all the time has been since the time God created it. Okay. And when, when he says in Jeremiah, I knew you before I formed you in the mother, in your mother's womb, he knew you intimately. He didn't know you just in a thought in his mind. The word no in that context is the same context as when it says Adam knew Eve, and then they bore a son. He, they knew each other intimately and sexually. I'm not saying God knew us sexually. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm saying it's the it's the intimate knowing someone, knowing them personally. God can't. You can't know somebody personally just because you know of them. Okay. There's no intimacy that is that is formed there. There's no personal relationship. There's nothing that's formed there um, if you're not actually in existence. Okay. A lot of people think that our existence just happened when we were birthed into this uh, this physical body, and that's not true. Okay. So um, you have the you have your spirit man. It's in the spirit realm all the time. This is how your spirit man. It doesn't require the things that your natural body does. So when you're in uh, even a dream state and you're taken in waters and you're underneath the waters and you're in the skies and all this different stuff, crazy stuff can happen. Okay, or God can show you things prophetically, right? And your spirit's hovered up in the air and you can see things, right? It's because the Lord has the Lord has taken you in the spirit, or demonic spirits have taken you in the spirit. Okay? And showing you things and different things happen. Your spirit man doesn't need air, doesn't need any of those things. There's a lot of people that say, oh, this doesn't make sense. I don't really know like how true that is because, look, then you have a soul. This is where your mind, will, your emotions, your intellect, your personality, all of those things reside there. This Your, your soul acts as a gateway between your spirit man and between your natural man, your natural person. Okay. Although your natural body has a brain, that brain has functions that are for your natural body. Okay. Your hand doesn't, I, I mentioned this before, your hand doesn't determine that it wants to go and drink alcohol, right? It doesn't have a mind of its own. Okay. So when the Bible talks about the flesh, it's, it's talking uh, about this natural realm. It's not simply talking about your physical body. It's talking about this natural realm. 
Okay, and your physical body is used to carry out the desires that are in your soul. Your hand doesn't have desires. Okay, your eyes themselves don't have have desires. Okay, your feet don't have desires to go to places that you shouldn't go. Those desires come from your soul. Your body is the is the vehicle in which you carry those things out, and you go and you do those things. Your desires come from from your soul. Okay, that's why the soul has to be purified. That's why it has to be delivered. That's why the healing has to take place there. Okay, so that the enemy doesn't can't be there to manipulate feelings and emotions, manipulate thoughts, manipulate your mind, and cause you to go and carry out these certain things with your physical body. Okay. Secondly, your physical body we know is made up of the substance of this earth. It's made up of this dimension. The substance of this dimension. Your spirit man is made up of the substance of the spirit realm. Whether darkness or whether light resides in the spirit realm. Because when we're born through this body, right, our spirit man has to go from darkness to light. So this tells us darkness and light both dwell there. Okay, people say, oh, what does uh, uh, light have in common with darkness? And they use that to try to say that uh, a person who's a Christian can't have demons and can't have all this stuff. They don't even understand that scripture. It's just so manipulated. It's just saying, what does it have in common? There's nothing in common. It does not say that it does not reside together. A Christian can have whatever they want to. They can mess around with whatever they want, right? You can be a Christian today and you see them going out to the club on, on the weekend. Right? Why do you think that happens? You can't just say that they, they go and mess with darkness and darkness don't have no part of their life. Okay? If, they're, if those things are in their soul, right? When that happens, their spirit man is being manipulated by the kingdom of darkness in the spirit realm. In the realm of the spirit, a person can operate with, with, the, with the power of God. You can operate with angels. You can be seated in heavenly places in your spirit man. You're not seated in heavenly places with your physical body. Okay, You're, you, you have to walk in obedience to the Lord. Your soul has to be purified. Your heart has to be purified. It has to be right. You can't have none of these vain imaginations and false prophetic stuff and all this other foolishness and nonsense that's out here. It has to be pure. You have to be obedient before God. And you can have access to the throne room of God. You, you can have access to angels. You can fulfill your scrolls. You can walk with mantles. You can have these different things that God has for you. But, but just going and doing whatever you want, a Christian can do whatever it is that they want to do, okay? And they'll end up either messing with darkness or walking with the Lord, okay? Their spirit man. And people will say, well, I don't know if that makes sense. Somebody told me that the soul is really the spirit, and all this other stuff, okay? Listen, I'm going to break it down for you in a natural way. So what happens if, if any one of you were sleeping right now and I came to your bed and I punched you in the arm, you're going to wake up. You're going to know that that took place and you're going to wake up, right? Why is it then when you go to have a surgery and they give you this witchcraft, okay, which is all of what it is, right? What does it do? What does it do? It puts this. It's this is why you should pray heavy if you have if you have to have any types of surgeries or any of that type of thing. Okay, because at this point in time, you will have no idea what's going on with your spirit, man. Because not only is your physical body put out, so they could punch you. You're not going to know what's going on. You won't even remember. You have a surgery. You have no idea what's going on because your soul is put to sleep. Your body and your soul is put to sleep. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, and at that point in time, if you aren't truly walking with God, the enemy could come in and take your spirit wherever, wherever. This is what happens when you see people that are um, on life supports, on life supports. Okay, they'll have no recollection of any of this type of stuff. Their spirit man is already gone somewhere. Okay, and and I brought this up even last weekend when Jesus called Lazarus back out of the tomb after he was already dead. Many people think that Jesus just spoke to his body and his body came forth, but that's not really true. Right when a person dies, or they're being on life through a ventilator or on some form of life support, their spirit's already gone. Their spirit's already gone. Jesus, when he when he called forth Lazarus to come back to life, he didn't call his physical body to life. His Jesus and his spirit in the realm of the spirit called forth Lazarus' spirit man. Lazarus' spirit man came back into his body, and his body rose back up and came back to life. His spirit had to come back into his body, and then he rose up in the physical form. Okay. 
So now, knowing this, this is going to help you understand all of these kingdoms. It's going to help you understand how Christians can or cannot have demons. It's going to help you understand how easily any person can choose to mess around with the kingdom of darkness in the spirit realm. Okay? It's going to show you how easily doors can be opened. Spirits can come into the soul. People think, oh, the, you know, the Bible, when it talks about our, our body being like a temple, right? And there's an outer court, an inner court, and a holy place. I taught about the, this uh, last weekend. Okay? The outer court is your physical body. The inner court is your soul body, right? And then the holy place is your spirit man, your spirit body, okay? Why? Because it's the only thing that can go into holy places. It's the only thing that can go into, in, into the holy places of God. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden you claimed Christ and you claim to be a Christian. Now all of a sudden your spirit man is just, boom, it's just sealed. God seals whom he wants to. God seals... Um, whom ha, whom he needs to, right? God seals whom maybe who has been delivered for and healed, right? Then he may seal that person. We don't get to determine when or if God seals us as a person. I'm telling you right now, just like we don't get to determine when or if we actually become born again. The Lord, if it's a free gift, then it comes from him. It doesn't come from him freely because we said, give it to us. It doesn't come from him and we become born again simply for the fact that we, we, we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, okay? And people say, well, that's what the Bible says. If you just confess it, there's a far difference between speaking something out of the mouth and actually truly having that inside your soul, okay? So in understanding that, the three parts of the human makeup, okay, this is going to help you understand all of these kingdoms, all right? So the marine kingdom, which is spiritual, Right. It resides in the spirit realm. That's why when I go in and I start talking to you about where these different domains of darkness and the headquarters and stuff are at, you're going to say, well, how the heck is, is the headquarters underneath the ocean? Right. It's spiritual in nature. Your spirit man doesn't need air to breathe. Your spirit man goes and it's seated in heavenly places. It doesn't need air and oxygen like the physical human body needs to in order to move. OK. It is also known as the aquatic or mysterious water world among the five domains of the kingdom of darkness. The marine kingdom is the deadliest of the earthly domains, right? It's the deadliest, the most dangerous of the earthly domains out of the, the three uh, earthly domains, okay? The fallen angel that rules the salt waters on the earth is Leviathan. I think a lot of you already uh, know that. Under Leviathan is the god of the sea, Poseidon or Neptune. Okay. A lot of people say, oh, these are just, it's just Greek and this is, you know, just mystic stuff and all this other stuff. It's not. It's not. It just appears that way because in the natural realm, over the years, right, over all the years and all the years of history, um, these things have came forth in the natural realm. People have talked about them, right? People have drawn, people have done all these things about them. So people create it or, or think think of it as this, this mystic type thing, right? Because not everybody has been open to see these things spiritually, okay? So that's why they call it mystic. But the truth of the matter is, is it's spiritual. It's in the spirit realm. When I talked to you guys about, about the earth domain uh, last Saturday, the fairies, the gnomes, and all that stuff, right? All of these things came from somewhere They can, because they're, they're operative and they are in the spirit realm. They're just not seen by the natural person, especially when the things of this world, the enemy has, is the God of this world. So he's, he's set up all the, so much things in this world just to keep us distracted as people. We spend all of our life chasing careers, chasing jobs, chasing just all of this stuff in this world, just everything just to be a complete distraction to where people, people never, many people never get born again spiritually, but people never get to the point where they really understand the purpose of what this, what this life is for, right? And I'm not saying being here in human form doesn't have any blessing to it, but if you learned what I, I, I taught last Saturday about how we were created created in spirit in the heavenlies prior, okay, then why are we birthed into sin automatically, right? Why why wouldn't God, if there, if there was a, a great um, 
purpose and blessing of us being here, okay, then why would we be birthed automatically on our way to hell? Why would we not be birthed here automatically on our way to heaven, right? As long as we stayed away from hell, as long as we were good, as long as we, we sought God. Why weren't we born automatically in light? Why were we born? Why is when we were birthed, our spirit man was automatically in darkness on, the, on its way to hell? And that is because many people have sinned and already fallen from the place that God had already given them in the heavenlies in their spirit. That's a whole different teaching right there. But some of you, some of you will get what I'm talking about. OK, so again, Poseidon, Neptune, he rules with the trident, right? Was an instrument which this instrument is, and we also see we also see the depictions of like the devil and satan right and in and, and the the character that he's portrayed to having the like the pitchfork right the th which it's it's a representation of the threefold human destruction which represents the three dimensions of the makeup of the human body like i just talked about or the human person right the spirit body the soul body and the human body the phys the physical flesh body okay that's what these these uh, Poseidon's fork and uh, Satan's uh, fork is what it represents. Okay, threefold threefold human destruction on all three aspects of the the makeup of uh, of uh, of us as people. Okay, under Poseidon is the Queen of India. I'm gonna get into that in a second. The Queen of India who rules over the queen of the coast okay so under poseidon is the queen of india then under her is the queen of the coast okay there are two main headquarters of the marine kingdom these are the two main there's other headquarters there's there's going to be headquarters in every large body of water see the the lakes the five lakes that i that i talked to you about okay in america and i'm sure there's other uh you know, vast lakes in, in other countries and stuff, but I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't list all those. Okay. So there are two main headquarters of the Marine kingdom. One main headquarters of the Marine kingdom is located beneath India's sea. Okay. And this is controlled by the queen of India. And you could, if you could ask anybody in those countries about the queen of India, and I'm sure many people could, could give lots of description about that. Okay. While the other main headquarters is established beneath the Atlantic Ocean and controlled by the Queen of the Coast. Okay. This is what I talked to you about uh, briefly either last weekend or the weekend before. And when I talked about this when in the Atlantic Ocean, okay, and we talked about the location of where like the Bermuda Triangle is at. Then I, then I referred to that as the Queen of the Coast, that headquarters, that castle that is in the sea, in the spirit realm, that kingdom that I'm talking to you about, the headquarters there, it's a, it's a replica, okay? It's replicated on earth where the certain kingdom is, where all of the kids go for fun in the state of Florida, okay? That many people know all, of, many people know all about, all of you. I think know exactly what I'm talking about. The castle that's there, right? All the kids want to go there. Okay, it's a it's a direct representation. The details of how all of that became about, and then the movies and stuff that they made for kids, and all of these certain cartoonish stuff, right? It, all of these things are representation and replicas of all this stuff. Okay, the, even the movie, the Little Mermaid, little the Little Mermaid was a child of Poseidon. Okay. All right. And then, so you remember what I was talking about with, um, uh, with Moses kind of in the beginning, right? So when I, I, I mentioned, those are the two main headquarters in the Marine kingdom. Okay. But there's many other uh, kingdoms and those kingdoms have other gods that rule in the, those those regions and those areas. Okay, so um, for instance, with Moses, we see in Moses when he was first sent back to Egypt, the first thing that God told him to do was to go and meet Pharaoh by the Nile. You remember he told him that he goes there every morning. Okay, he he goes there for his worship. That there during their time period. 
Okay, Tammuz is one of the gods, right, in Egypt. Horus was one of the gods in Egypt. Mat, which is M-A-A-T, okay, and Hapi, H-A-P-I, if you want to write those down. I think some of you know what Tammuz and Horus is, okay? These were the gods over Egypt this time. These were the gods that they worshipped, and they they had different purposes, okay? We know that Horus had to do with the sun, right, with Ra, Okay, Hopi in ancient Egyptian religion was a personification of the gods of the god of Egypt in the Nile River. Okay, along with Tammuz. So his worship, their worship, was to this god. This is why now he, Moses didn't know that the that the that the first plague that he was going to bring was to the waters, right? And I'm not I, I'm not saying I know what God and him talked about personally before it was put in the Bible as scripture. Okay. But I'm simply saying, and for most of you who know prophetically, even though you, you hear from God, you hear the voice of God, and you know that he's talking to you, and you do the things that he tells you to do, right? There, there are many times that the Lord doesn't tell us what to do in the next step until we do the first thing, okay? So he goes, and he, he meets Pharaoh by the Nile, right? This is a, a prophetic representation of the first God that Moses was going to go against because the first curse that he brought upon Egypt was in the waters. Now I'm, this, now I'm going to take this at two and three layers deep on the prophetic revelation here. Okay. Not only was it the first curse, but if you notice everything that happened with Moses prophetically and his mantle and the call on his life had to do with water. His life was spared by water. He was saved up out of the waters. Okay. The first curse that he brought forth in Egypt was against the waters, okay? This is what I'm talking about, about territorial type warfare that I mentioned to you guys. Certain people have to be called to do certain things, right? Or else you'll end up putting a curse on your own life because these kingdoms know whether or not you have authority or you've been sent by God. Because if you've been sent by God there, your voice will carry authority in whatever territory or region. But if you're just talking something... It ain't going to matter. Ain't nothing going to happen there except your, your life's going to end up being hindered, right? Unless you're a false prophet or something of that nature, right? Then, then you might get a bunch of tares, right? You're going, to be a, you're going to be a leader of the tares, so you might heap a bunch of tares onto you, but you're not actually going to do anything spiritual that you claim to do, right? So, and Moses struck the rock. The Red Sea was parted, right? The Red Sea, God could have just parted the Red Sea when they got there. But he, but he didn't do that, right? He waited for Moses. He instructed Moses on what to do. And then when Moses did what he wanted him to do, then he parted the Red Sea, okay? So understand this. This is the, this is the threefold represent, uh, a spiritual revelation, okay, about Moses. So Moses, it, it seems that he just brought a curse against the water, right? And there was just a curse against the Egyptians. But everything that he did, all of these different curses that were brought, they were warfare against those gods. They were warfare against all of these gods. They prayed to all of these different gods for all of these things, for their crops, right? For everything that they had, they prayed to all of these different gods. Everything that happened when Moses brought these curses, it was a war, in the spirit realm and it was a war against these gods that were that were that were over Egypt because those gods those principalities powers and rulers those were the real people that had the authority over the Israelites it may seem in the natural that Pharaoh and the Egyptians were the one that had kept them enslaved but that all of that only happened in that way and in that manner because these gods these principalities powers and rulers controlled everything in the spirit realm I hope you guys hear me. All right, so I'm going to give you guys some scripture and then we'll we'll keep going. I'll break it down a little bit further, okay? So uh, the first one is let me put it in the let me put it in the in the chat chat. Okay? Is Isaiah 27 Isaiah 27, 1, okay? And it says, at that time, meaning in that day, the Lord will punish Leviathan, right? Who's a sea creature and ancient near uh, the Eastern text that represents chaos, okay? 
or swiftly moving or fleeing snake or serpent. Says he will punish Leviathan, the, co the coiled, twisting snake. With his great, hard and powerful sword, he will kill the monster, the dragon in the sea. Okay. The snake and the dragon, it's both uh, it's representative of Leviathan. Okay. Psalms 104. Twenty five to twenty six. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. Psalms 104. Okay, Leviathan is the, the principality over all of the marine kingdom. Again, the marine kingdom is not just the ocean. Marine kingdom has to do with all the waters, like I just mentioned with the Nile River. Okay, there are other rivers in the U.S. There's lakes, different bodies of water that these principalities govern. But Leviathan is over them all. Okay, there are, there's like I like I was just saying, there's sirens of the oceans, right? Sirens of the of the sea, and and again, sirens are a classification of basically all the water spirits together, right? Principalities, powers, sirens of the the sea, sirens of the rivers, sirens of the lakes, sirens of the streams. And sirens of the ponds, okay? So there's some ponds that have demonic uh, powers and, and, and spirits over them as well. And um, I can't go into too much detail, but I there is a testimony when, when you have counties that are in states, okay? These different counties um, have governed principalities over them, okay? There are certain places and certain areas that connect many counties together. There are certain places that have bodies of water. These bodies of water can and are used as meeting grounds in the realm of the spirit for these particular types of kingdoms. Okay, This is for assignments, right? This is for plans, agreements, different things that are going to be carried out against... against uh, Against the world, against the world and worldly people, and against God's people as well, against those who they can carry them out against. Okay, the sirens of the ocean are the most powerful of the uh, aquatic world. Okay, the greater the body of water is, the greater the strength of the principality, power, and rulers of that area and that govern it. And when I get into some of this, you're you'll start to, uh, I mean, you'll start to understand, you'll start to see that. That's why. In this in this country in the in the U.S., you can see that whether it's in California, whether it's in Florida and Miami, whether it's in New York, or whether it's even in Chicago, that is around the the Five Lakes, you will see that these are the largest uh, regions and areas just in general in this country. Okay, and you'll understand when I get down here and I start talking about all of the things that are produced out of the marine kingdom and that sort of thing, right? All the high-end stuff, all the luxury uh, items and cars and all this kind of stuff that's produced out of there, you'll start to get a better understanding of why those regions are on the coast, why those are the largest regions, okay? Why these are the regions and the cities and the areas that produce all of these uh, products, e even creatively, okay? I'm not saying everything has to be manufactured here, but it's all produced and created, right? Uh, they travel in various forms and, and are very vicious creatures, and they live in any body of water, fresh or salt water, okay? They are called water sirens. Like I mentioned, sea, lake, or river dragons, they can be mentioned as water nymphs, okay? And I'm going to get into nymphs just a little bit here in a moment. Uh, nerids, okay? Water serpents, like pythons, all right? 
marine qu queens, kings, princes, and princesses. Certain water gods, like I mentioned uh, earlier with Poseidon, okay, water demons, divas, avatars, and aquatic demonic creatures. Okay, they can cause sexual perversions, unnatural lust and desires in beauty, vanity, uh, luxury items. They can cause suicides that pertain to the waters. They can they cause drownings. Okay, tidal waves, tsunamis, and many disasters, uh, including hurricanes, and also disasters to just uh, sea life and animals in general. When I mentioned earlier about that particular uh, castle being one of the headquarters um, off the 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 coast, right where the Bermuda's at, if you notice, that's where all of the hurricanes in this country come from. They're all birthed there, right? They're all birthed there. It's not by just some random chance, okay? It's not by some random chance that all the mysteries and all those other things that have happened over over all the years. I'm sure all of you have heard the stories, right? So it's not by chance that all of these things happen. There's a reason, okay? There's, there's principalities, powers, and rulers in the realm of the spirit, and they govern all of these things, okay? Nymphs, like I mentioned before, nymphs are always female in nature. Okay, there are three counterparts to the female nymphs that are male gods. Okay, and these are called satyrs. These are from the in the woodlands, like the Pestifer Kingdom, like I mentioned last Saturday. So you spell that S A T Y R S. Satyrs, okay? Tritons from the sea, right? Triton, Poseidon was a form of a triton, okay? Tritons from the sea and Potomoe from lakes and rivers. Potomoe is P-O-T-A-M-O-I. They are responsible for sensuality, lustful attractions, vain beauty, and high-end luxury items, okay? And the purpose of this is in order to mislead and lure humans in their souls to desire after the, the vanities of this world, the vain things of this world, okay? Once the soul of the human, okay, the mind, the will, the emotions, the personality, the intellect, all of these things, okay, once the soul, those aspects of the human, is lured into vanity, vanity is a spirit, okay? Then that means their spirit is submitted and worships at these, uh, at these altars that are not holy, okay? So that's what I'm trying to tell you. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian, right? When, the, when, that, when the, those parts of the soul get ensnared, then all of a sudden, your spirit man is now connected and messing with the spirit of vanity in the spirit realm. This establishes a covenant, with the marine kingdom when these things happen. This covenant is then brought before the courts of heaven, before God, and it's used to establish legal rights into the human's life, okay? Their spirit, their soul, their body, and their life, okay? This is what gives the access. These covenants, these contracts, the different things that people make with vanity and these vain things of this world that people chase after, okay? All right, this is the kingdom of blue magic, blue witchcraft. So if you remember from the other four domains that I mentioned, black magic, white magic, uh, red magic, and green magic, okay? Green magic is the pestifer kingdom. It has to do with the earth, okay? It has to do with the, the, the leaves, the, the woods, right? And when you see um, people involved in witchcraft pertaining to, uh, oh, let me step back. So if you weren't on the lies before, the reason I break this down into the different magic, right, is because blue witchcraft falls underneath that. It's a form of, uh, it's a form of, of magic, okay? And you have witches, wizards, and warlocks and these these witches and warlocks they're assigned from they're assigned to and assigned from different kingdoms okay 
So when they say, oh, it's just witchcraft and, 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 and they, they blame it on a witch, okay? There are, uh, well, wh what kind of witch and what kingdom is she, does, does that witch work out of, okay? She might specialize in blue magic because she's already connected from the marine kingdom. She gets her powers and stuff. She does her rituals and all this stuff. She uses seawater. Uh, let me not get ahead of myself because I, I, I put all that down here. Actually, it's in the next part. So I'll just go into that in a second. But these, these witches and warlocks, they work out of uh, different kingdoms. Okay, There might be a witch who's, or, or warlock that's been doing this stuff for years. They might operate in all of these kingdoms. They might be a high-ranking witch or warlock, okay? That's how these people, then they start working with higher-ranking principalities and powers, okay? They are just like the, you know, Elijah's of the time, right? He, he went against the witchcraft, but he was able, he went against high-ranking principalities. He didn't just go against Jezebel and the false prophets, right? He went against the principalities that ruled in that region because he was mantled to do that. I'm telling you, you people think that this person is just person against person, or it's it was Elijah's spirit against Jezebel's spirit. It was not, right? It was Elijah and what God had mantled him to do, and the power that was given to him and bestowed to him from heaven that was going against the principalities and powers that that Jezebel and all her prophets they got their power from. Okay, it's much higher than just ind individual people. Okay, so that's why when you see me talk about even before, and I talked about. Uh, breaking down and, and 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 destroying the foundations of a lot of these false prophetic things in these false churches. That's what I'm telling you is that it's it's not going to just come by uh, calling somebody out. Which if God says I'm all for any of that, right? But it's not just going to. Most of those people aren't going to uh, even realize that they're not going to repent. They most of them just keep going in their pride, doing what they're doing, right? So. It's it's a it's a it's a higher ranking mantle and a higher ranking authority and power that God has to give to certain people. And then when they war, that war actually goes against principalities and powers and rulers that are building up the false church. You get what I'm saying? And that's where the war has to really take place in order for it to actually be uh, act for actual destruction to happen. OK. Yeah, absolutely. Against the spirit of all. Yep. So, um, okay, witches and warlocks, this water magic, blue magic, okay? Water magic is used by sea witches and warlocks. They have a special connection to the ocean. They might practice water magic by, by using the sea water in their rituals. They use the actual water from the sea, from their areas, right? They'll bring in seashells uh, for their altars. They pay special attention uh, to the moon, Right, the different solar, the different eclipses to the moon. If you remember when I mentioned before, back in the cosmic kingdom a couple weeks back, okay, this is how these uh, one way that these kingdoms are even tied together. Because if any of you know anything about the oceans, you know that the tides come in and out um, based on the the origins of the moon. Okay, I think many of you uh, know that. Okay, because it helps, it controls the tides, All right? They also, um, the items used by sea witches and warlocks and wizards include shells, driftwood, fishing nets, nautical ropes, jars of ocean water, and sea salt. Okay? If you remember also, I talked a little bit about how if you go into some of these places, maybe like, uh, home goods or I don't know wherever people go to you know get some of their decors I'm sure it's different in different areas of the country some places have these stores uh, and they have different names okay so I don't know where everybody goes in different areas but when you go to these places you will see that a lot of the stuff that they have to decorate with it comes in the form of driftwoods okay it comes in the form of certain woods that come from different countries you notice that uh, a lot of this natural wood that, that they make into these beads and these different things that have tassels hanging from them and stuff, right? That come from all this different Buddha stuff. This is all stuff from other gods. This is all stuff from other kingdoms. And they get people to bring this stuff uh, into their homes, okay? Okay, uh, sex, sex witches are from the waters, okay? What is a sex witch? A sex witch practices 
and does rituals pertaining to sexual magic through the spirit realm, okay, that ends up using emotional manipulation to human beings, either that are in the world or those pertaining to God's people, if those people give into and give over to those things. Okay. This also, um, what happens is, is that these witches and warlocks and wizards, they perform certain sexual rituals, okay, which in the long run is become satanic, is a form of satanic ritual abuse, okay. But they perform certain sex rituals on purpose in certain areas and regions, okay, in order to cast spells. While they're doing this, there's a purpose of them doing this because when, when that happens sexually, it puts a spell and a curse upon the region and upon the area in which they're at. Wherever either they live or maybe they've been sent by the enemy. Okay, I know some of you have been sent to do territorial warfare and certain things. Just as God sends you and tells you to do certain things certain ways, the enemy sends these kinds of people to different areas, different regions, different places, and they do all kinds of different types of rituals, including sexual rituals. Okay, and that's why you see, especially around these regions and these coasts, you see that that lust, you see the 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 vanity of having, you know, a lot of fake stuff, right? When we put all this fake stuff in their bodies and different things. And I'm not trying to put anybody down or, or any of that kind of thing uh, that has any of that stuff. But I'm simply saying you will see that in these areas, it's, it's, it's just nonstop. That's all that they do, right? You'll see that in a lot of these regions, this is where even like, which I'm going to get into some of this, like you'll see where even the, the, the makeup, what it actually does to the features on their faces, okay? And, and I'm not telling any of you to specifically not to wear makeup or to wear makeup or any of that. That's just between you and God. But I'm talking about if you notice what makeup used to look like when women were wearing it even 10, 15, 20 years ago, compared to now, everybody looks like an alien. Like they're, everything is done, with, it's just like this, this complete mask that's painted onto the face and it's caused everyone to look like 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 aliens. A lot of these fem females look like aliens and, and just weird stuff. Like, you know what I'm talking about. I know all of you do, regardless if you don't like it or not, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's just, it doesn't look normal, okay? It's, it's they're, they're starting to try to make it look normal, but it's just, it doesn't appear normal to anyone who can uh, truly see in the spirit, right? So anyway, Back to the sex witches practicing sex magic through the spirit realm, uh, and 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 then it goes forth like a spell over the region and area as an emotional manipulation, causing men and women to both uh, operate in forms of lust. Okay, it it involves working with arousal and and orgasms during the manifestation of rituals, like what I was saying. Okay, either partnered or also can be done solo. Or also, as some of you have may heard and known, they they perform sexual acts with certain demonic uh, powers and principalities in the spirit realm. Okay, this is how many uh, men even have had uh, sexual relations with like uh, siren spirits, right? Like mer uh, mermaid type spirits. Okay, this is what happens when they uh, become initiated, initiated into the kingdom. In a, in, a, in a sexual manner, right? And it creates a sexual bond and they come and sleep with them in their, their dreams and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, cultivating self-love in all forms. We see that like a major, major thing, right? Like self-love, 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 right? And it and it's, it's turns into a, um, what word am I looking for here? This, this, it's, it cultivates uh, this selfish type nature, this independent type nature of people and both men uh, to be successful, women to be successful, creates this is independent, this uh, this uh, self selfish desires, right, in all forms. Okay, there's nothing wrong with having like um, a, a healthy form of knowing God loves you, right, and and that sort of thing. But Scripture tells us we're supposed to die to ourselves, right? We're supposed to die to ourselves. So that should be the main, you know, that should be the main focus is dying to ourselves. All right, this is also, okay, like I mentioned, the nymphs. This is also where we get nymphomaniac, 
Okay, this is where nymphomaniac comes from. It, it, it would seem originally just to come from like a word and something that was created, okay? It's a spiritual disposition, which is operated by spirits, okay? But it's created mostly from sexual childhood abuse, satanic ritual abuse, and then like I mentioned, heavy amounts of, of lust and vain, vain, uh, vain lust right for the things of this world and the and attractions to men and women we see that most of the things that men do when it comes to like careers and like this status and all the things they chase after right the money and the cars and all this it's all it's all uh vain for the purpose to uh of attracting women right why because many women are vain and are given over to that spirit of prostitution Okay, and I'm not talking about prostitution standing on a street corner. I'm talking about prostitution in the soul where they're willing to sell out their their uh, their calling that God has for them, their purpose that God has, their mantles. Their they'll give up all of it for for uh, you know a handsome face with a bank account. Okay. So, and this this is the same reason that you see um, women chase after these, these vain things of, of, of beautifying themselves to a, uh, just to an unhealthy like extent, right? You, you all know what I'm talking about. They do that. Why? Because it's going to attract men. It's going to attract men to them and into their life. And it's all just this, this form of vanity working back and forth. And all of this stuff, uh, uh, comes from the Marine kingdom. All of it's done from the Marine Kingdom. Men get chase the money. They do all this stuff. They get the expensive cars. They get the nice suits and all that stuff. Why? Because all the women that's lost in vanity is going to be attracted to all of those things. The women do all this stuff to their bodies and look certain ways. Why? Because all of these vain men that chase all of this stuff is going to be attracted to that. Okay? So the nymphomaniac is, uh, it's being unsatisfied with, uh, certain sexual activities, you know, uh, confined in a godly, uh, ordained marriage. Okay. It's constantly needing more or extreme versions of sexual encounters. I mentioned this before. Some people have been initiated unknowingly and maybe even knowingly, right, into, uh, satanic sexual ritual abuse. And what that is, is the severe, uh, types of sexual encounters with people the all of the the, the bondages and the the defecatings and uh, the beatings and all this kind of like different stuff that takes place that satanic uh, sexual ritual abuse okay same thing that happens with uh, uh, you know rapes and childhood abuses even if they're not um, even if they're not severe in that nature Okay, a lot of people mention or try to talk about that the Marine Kingdom is not biblical, but it's spoken about in many places of the Bible. But it's most profound in the details in the book of Ezekiel. Okay, so I'm going to put these in the comments. Okay, Ezekiel 26, 16. Then all the princes of the sea, okay, it's talking about the principalities in the sea. Leviathan is a principality, okay? Poseidon is a principality, okay? Queen of India, principality. Queen of the coast, principality. These are all angels. These are all angels that rebelled, okay? Then all of the princes shall come down from their thrones. Just catch that first part. Then all the princes of the sea shall come down from their thrones, and lay away their robes this this shows their their authority okay their robes they'll lay away their robes they'll come down off of their thrones governing place of government okay just like a judge a judge sits in a seat that a, a judge is on a, a on a throne it's a form of a throne and they'll put off their embroidered garments they shall clothe themselves with trembling they shall sit upon the ground and shall tremble at every moment and be astonished at thee. Okay, then it goes on in the very next verse. And it says, 
and they shall take up a lamentation for thee and say to thee, how art thou destroyed that was inhabited of seafaring, seafaring men, the renowned city, which was strong in the sea, <laughs> the renowned city that was strong in the sea. Again, this isn't talking about in the natural realm. There's no city that is strong in the sea in the natural realm. This is a spirit. This is a, a representation of the spiritual realm. She and her inhabitants, which caused their terror to be on all that haunt it. Again, and they shall take up lamentation for thee and say to thee, how art thou destroyed that was inhabited of seafaring men, the renowned city, which was strong in the sea. She and her inhabitants were strong in the sea, which caused their terror to be on all that haunt it. Okay, so I've listed here a few different uh, ways to be able to tell if uh, the Marine Kingdom is active or working in your life in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Um, I didn't put too many things in here about the dreams because a lot of people know about that with the Marine Kingdom. Okay. So I'll just get that out of the way. I've listed 15 things here, and most of them don't have anything to do with sexual activity in your dreams and that sort of thing. All right, because that's what everybody talks about. Okay, so but if you're having sexual dreams, if you're if you have a lot of perversion coming in your dreams, if you have men or women coming to sleep with you in any way, uh, shape, or form, right, then uh, then you have the Marine Kingdoms active there somehow. Spirit spouses and spirit husbands that I taught on about three or four weeks ago, they're active. They come out of the Marine Kingdom. Okay, spirit husbands, spirit wives, they come out of the Marine Kingdom. Okay. If you have, like, if you're having a dream just every so often, a couple times a year, it's probably not the case. But if you're having them regularly throughout the week, then there, there's something going on there. Okay. If you have, um, there's high activity, you can't overcome, you know, pornography or, you know, certain uh, sexual things, that sort of thing. You got a problem with the, the Marine Kingdom as well. Okay. 